Welcome back to the neighborhood, boys and girls. Our first guest of tonight is Mike, my man from The Harvest. Welcome. Thank you. Jim. Welcome to the neighborhood. Uh, Mike is working on some pretty crazy stuff. We love to promote everything from all the members of The Harvest. And when I saw him talking about the uh, hempcrete project that he's working on, uh, I definitely wanted to come in and talk a little bit about that. First, I want to talk, before you get into the actual product, talk a little bit about The Harvest Network and and networking and, and what that kind of stuff means to you and how you use that to do business. Yeah, so the Harvest Group, it's a, you know, it's a group of like-minded people that want to better themselves. Um, so it's, it's really about, you know, continuing improvement. Um, you know, I really picked up this project. This project has been something that's been on a back burner of mine since college. So 12 years plus at this point. Um, I started seeing you know, different trends, um, you know, politically and all that this might actually mm -hmm. be something. And I, I, I realized I needed to pick it up. And I just, I, you know, it's something that's so big, I can't conquer it on my own. So it was about going out, starting to network with people, getting it out there as to what I'm actually doing and working with other people that have had challenges and, and faced adversity, growing businesses and stuff. And that, that's what it's all about is helping each other, you know, move to the next level. Sure. All right, so this is a new venture for you, right? Kind of a passion project, yeah. something you're looking to yeah. grow. So let's talk a little bit about what it actually is and then also what some of the misconceptions are about the product because we already talked about that <laughs> off camera a little bit with yeah. people. So. so this was, I really, I learned about this product writing my senior paper in college. Uh -huh. And I found this thing called hempcrete. And what I found out was it's a, it's a building process that's thousands of years old. So if you ever looked at like the old Japanese, um, you know, yellow buildings with the thatched roofs mm -hmm. that, that look like a concrete, they're actually made out of a hempcrete. Okay. Um, so this is one of the oldest building technologies known to man. Unfortunately, it was outlawed in the 1930s. Due to a bunch of political stuff, billionaires getting worried sure. about their patents and whatnot. But, you know, the thing ever since I, I, you know, started talking about this, I started, I applied my background of concrete and, and construction and all growing up to the research I did. And I started making bricks out of it. And I told people, hey, we'll end up building houses out of this. And the, the same old joke is, oh, we're going to smoke your house. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that, was, that was 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. Fast forward, I've had, um, you know, I've had meetings with people who run some of the largest uh, property firms in the country, um, you know, just getting, you know, getting the attention of these people uh, over the last couple of years. It's just been amazing. You know, went from a, a total joke to something that's building a multi-billion dollar industry right now. Nice. Now, how do you get people to understand that hemp is not marijuana and you can't smoke hemp and get high? So right now we're actually kind of lucky that people think it is <laughs> the same because every time a state goes towards recreational marijuana, anything marijuana eases up, the hemp industry eases up. Sure. On. So we've kind of been going under the radar of, you know, if they're going to open up the marijuana laws, they have to open up the hemp laws. And really the 2018 Farm Bill kind of created a industrial hemp, uh, you know, industry, unfortunately, you know, there's still too much regulation on it that's that's really, um, you know, kind of stopping the industry to be what it actually could be. Um, but there's organizations, the National uh, Hemp Feed Association, the National Hemp Builders Association. So there's, there's actually money coming behind it now to actually show, hey, this is completely separate. This is a, you know, product of its own that it shouldn't be lumped together and regulated like marijuana. Can you gr you can grow hemp in New Jersey right now under certain restrictions? So you can. Um, you know, of course, you have to have an FBI background check, fingerprints, mm -hmm. licensing. You have to pay for them to come out and test the THC level. If it if it hits over 0.3 percent THC, then you have to destroy your entire crop. So. For the farmer, there's a lot of risk involved. Mm -hmm. um, the secondary market is, and that, that's where the bottleneck is right now, is there's not enough people to process it from the farmer to get it to the end user at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really setting up right now an entire infrastructure that you know, we stopped in the 1930s. So all the technology out there just pretty much stopped in 1937, and now 
companies are picking it up today and then applying new modern technologies to it. And and like hemp paper, hemp other stuff, why is that better than wood pulp? Yeah, so I mean wood pulp, a tree takes, you know, minimum for a pine tree, you're talking 20, 25 years to grow. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, this the hemp plant grows in a 90 days, right. um, you know, full cycle. So, you know, using the same land over and over, um, not needing fertilizers, pesticides, um, you know, added nitrogens, anything like that, like we do where, you know, cotton, um, you know, hemp something that's, you know, can really easily replace cotton or the majority of cotton. I mean, the shirt I have on is a 55% hemp and 45% um, organic cotton blend. Okay. Um, so really the, the amount, the, the less pesticides in the hemp, um, you know, it's just better for the farmer as well as the environment. Nice. So how long do you think it's going to take before that becomes the norm in this country? So there's there's starting to be some interest from very big organizations. Mm-hmm. Procter & Gamble just, um, just created an alliance with a Canadian-based company, or Georgia, one of the large paper manufacturers. Okay. Um, one of their plants in North Carolina is going to be upfitted to make toilet paper out of hemp. Okay. So it's coming. Um, you know, right now there's maybe four to five large-scale decorticators in the U.S. Uh, I'm working on another project with a group of guys that we're trying to get a decorticator facility set up. And that's that's the step between the waste product that's laying on the farmer's field right now and what we can build houses out of, make paper out of, and everything else out of. Okay. Now, the same product or the same hemp can make paper and wood and everything else there isn't yeah. like a difference between the two of them uh so there is and i okay. brought a couple things i love it here. let's see it so what i have here is a industrial hemp straw stalk okay. so this is the the industrial hemp plant doesn't look like the marijuana plant the industrial hemp plant typically grows anywhere from six to 15 feet tall depending upon what species it is okay and the top parts, the, the shorter ones are usually grown for seed and proteins and stuff like you see in Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. Um, so anytime you see anything hemp related like that, the waste product is this stalk laying in the field. So right now the stalks are going to waste because there's no one to process it. So if we see the outside of the stalk, if we kind of kind of like a bamboo here, looking thing, kind of looks like bamboo. Right, right. Um, the outside kind of looks like a, a fibrous kind of, um, you know, gotcha. kind of looks like you could make a rope out of. And then the inside is sort of like a wood chip. Okay. So this this was going, done through a machine here, and you can kind of see this side looks like wood chips, and this side kind of looks like um, yarn Straw, or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. That's the main thing is getting the two different parts of the plant apart. So okay. the inside is called the herd. That's the part that I actually use. I mix that with lime and some other additives, and that's what makes the hemp creep. Okay. And the molecules of the limestone and the hemp actually fuse together, and they take in carbon from the atmosphere over okay. time. So they continue to get harder and harder and petrify in the stone over time. Over time. So they're not softening over time like you would think. Right. most wood materials would do. They're yep. actually getting harder based on their consumption of the carbon. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Right. And there, there's an accepted formula in Europe and all right now as to what the actual drawdown of carbon is because that's really going to be the biggest thing in this industry is anytime you hear net zero, anyone trying to go that way, mm-hmm. this product is the product that's going to get us to net zero. Okay. Um, the outside part of it, again, that's the part that they, they turn into... Um, you know, they, they can soak it in water and pulp it and turn it into paper, or they can spin it in the yarn okay. and make clothes out of it. All right. Now, you also have some wood with yeah. you, right? That That is your so, actual hardwoods, right? Yeah. So this is actually a company out of Kentucky. A uh, gentleman I've met, uh, Greg. Mm-hmm. Uh, the company is called Hempwood. And what they do is this is made out of a soy-based binder and hemp. Um, the entire factory is carbon negative. They reuse, uh, they, you know, they, they, they capture the heat that comes off of their facility to reuse it for energy. Any waste is gone back in. Right now they're marketing a hemp wood flooring out of it, hmm. which is really cool. 
Um, they make uh, cabinets and furniture and stuff out of it right now. Now, is this glue, like, to the naked eye, this looks like a particle board would look, if, you, if you're, you know, familiar with, like, MDF and all that particle board. Is there a glue in here that goes in to do it, or is it just yeah. pressed and gone So, through? So it's pressed with hundreds of tons, but it's also a glue in there. So okay. it's... The, the glue's based off of a soybean. It's a soy-based binder, okay. so there's no formaldehyde, um, you know, anything like that that's leaching out into your home, um, like a lot of the cheaper hardwood flooring okay. had back in the early 2000s. Nice. And the other stuff is a, a combined, like almost like a plywood plank, right? Yeah, so the, the backing underneath is a, is a pine backing, okay. and then the top is the hemp flooring of it. Hmm. But again, it's all soy-based. Now, in its form here, is that to the consumer more expensive or less expensive in its current form right now? Right now, they're roughly in line with the same cost as okay. you know a good hardwood flooring, oak wood flooring. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, it's smaller scale right now. They sure. have the first facility up and running with plans of opening up multiple facilities in the near future. And as production becomes bigger it should drive Correct. the cost down Correct. And make yeah. it more and affordable. As, you know, as we have more farmers growing it, because mm -hmm. this this crop is should be a rotation crop for any organic farmer. So this crop repairs the soil. Okay. So once there's a end market to it, once the once the infrastructure is set up, it's it's kinda at that point at first too many farmers grew it and then they lost money. Right. Now the production's ramping up and farmers are kind of, you know, going away from it a little bit. So it's there it's that dance between, you know, supply and demand. Like the demand's there, but then the supply wasn't and vice versa. Gotcha. Now I live in the sticks down in like Franklinville and I know not this year but last year there was a big push for people that were looking to like use land or rent right. land from the crops and do that. Is that still something that they're looking for now or is that kind of cyclical and it's just you know, the people that are into it that are doing it. So that was what we refer to as the green rush or the CBD rush. So the CBD isolate market totally spiked and, and there was talks about twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars of profit per acre. Right. That the C B D plant, you're always gonna have that around, but that's more of I equate that to a fine wine. Just like it's more of like the marijuana plant. So mm -hmm. you have, you know, it's hand manicured, hand grown, pretty much, um, you know, like that. Where this plant that I'm talking about is, you know, any any um, you know industrial farmer, any grain farmer could rotate into their field and utilize the same tractors and everything that they use okay. now for the most part. Is there a seasonal time that's better? For hemp, like some people, you know, some crops are early spring, some crops are late spring. If someone normally did an early spring crop, could they do hemp as a late, a late season crop, or is it only really good at a certain period of time? So it depends on what type of crop are you growing. Are you growing just an industrial crop? Are you growing a crop for seed? Um, you know, where are you at in the zone? So there's a lot of research going in right now because okay. again. You know, the genetics that we have, you know, a lot of the stuff wasn't researched for so long because it was so taboo. So that research is going on right now. There's the University of Maryland's doing some some great studies down there. Um, you know, there's there's uh, can, some grows going in Kentucky. So there's all over the country right now. They're in, you know, real world. They're testing those things. Okay, cool. Now, if someone out there is watching this and they want to get in touch with you to run some business stuff by you or ask you questions, how would they get in touch with you? Yeah, so right now I have a Facebook page called Hemp Rock. Uh, also on Instagram, Hemp Rock. Uh, you can find me on there. H-E-M-P-R-O-C-K? Yes. Just the, okay, good deal. Awesome, and they can reach out to you and message yeah. you and see what's going on. Yeah, they and can reach out to me. Um, you were saying you have the, the sprayer. That's your. That's so, like your yeah. baby, right? You have the only, what is it? So, so I have the only hempcrete spray machine of its kind in North America. Okay. There's another one out there, but it's, again, it's like 1930s technology. You okay. have to pre-mix it, and then it just shoots it through with air. 
Whereas this one, what I'm able to do is, so I showed you earlier, I showed you the hemp herd. Mm -hmm. So what this machine does is essentially the center here shoots the hemp herd and then the outside goes ahead and it pushes through like a lime sludge. And then I can dial it in as to how much water I want into it. Okay. And what that is, what I can do with that is I can actually spray this onto the walls. So the product actually, you know, really big news was just approved for the U.S. code. Okay. Um, so it's going to be on the 2024 U.S. code as a, you know, permittable coded uh, building product. Okay. So my goal is over the next uh, six months is to start actually doing custom finished basements because this is it's hemp it's hempcrete is fireproof, moldproof, termite proof, rot proof. So it's the perfect material for a basement. If so it's interior, not exterior, then, so, as it is right now. So it can be exterior. Okay. Um, it looks like a finished stucco on the outside. In okay. Europe, what they do is they build your typical timber frame home, mm -hmm. and then they'll build out the wall six inches on the outside, six inches on the inside. There's no need for sheetrock, no need for Tyvek, no need for insulation. It's one membrane, and it actually regulates the temperature and humidity of the home. Um, there's a full hempcrete home that was built in Dallas, or outside of Dallas this okay. last summer. It's 102 degrees down there. It never went above 72 or 73 degrees in the house without HVAC because wow. of how it regulates the temperature. Huh, that's awesome. So what's your short-term plan for that? What are you looking to do this year? You're looking to do a couple projects? And yeah, I'm, I'm looking to line up some projects, uh, you know, okay. people looking to finish their basements. Uh, I'm... Over the next three to six months, I'm, I'm doing my basement so I can get the actual material cost calculations in line. Okay. Uh, most of my stuff has been on paper right now. I just got this machine, so I just started working with it. All right. So my projections right now is I think I can be right in line with the, the custom building techniques, possibly undercut it with okay. a far superior product. Awesome, awesome. Well, definitely, I want you to stop back in Absolutely. in a couple of months. Yeah. We want some updates when you get the, uh, the the basement for you done, and we yeah. want to do whatever we can to promote you and get you some business and uh, grow that market. Sounds great. Thanks awesome. for having me, Jim. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with our next guest on Mr. Mortgage's Neighborhood.